Welcome back to the Jenny McCarthy Show. I'm Jenny McCarthy Wahlberg. I'm so excited. This book is awesome. Can't wait because you're going to love it. It's called 30 Life Crisis, Navigating My 30s, One Drunk Baby Shower at a Time. The book is available now. Lisa Schwartz, welcome. Oh, hey. Thanks for having me. I'm so honored. Of course. You have got an amazing YouTube channel. What led, led, you, to, led you to begin a, doing a YouTube channel? Ah, uh, girl, I started 10 years ago before YouTube was really YouTube. Damn. Yeah, I'm a dinosaur. Um, and I just did it for fun. I just was doing it while I was auditioning. I was so discouraged by the whole like world of LA and auditioning. <laughs> right. And it, uh, it was just like an outlet for me. And then it turned into this huge fucking thing. Isn't that great? It's like... I just fell into it. Like, I can't take any credit. You know what I mean? It's just meant to be, I suppose. And you've got great shit to talk about. So that's why you're successful. Yeah. And the book, 30 Life Crisis, Navigating My 30s, I think everyone can relate that's listening since we're all kind of in the same age group. I'm in my 40s. But how many people in your 40s tell you in your 30s, oh, my God, wait till you get in your 40s. It's so much better. Everyone. I can't wait for 40s. Sounds great. It actually is. It's so weird because I was so fearful of it because I'm like, ew, 40s old. And then when you're in it, you don't give a shit. I mean, you still wind up getting Botox and lip injections. But, <laughs> you know, there is there is this like relief. It's like, I don't know. It's like it's like taking the biggest shit of your life, you know, when you feel so good I afterwards. I love a good like, dump. It's so true. Yeah. So so what what was going on in your 30s where you're like, fuck this. I need to write about it. I mean, I became recently single right when I turned 30. And so I had to jump into the dating world. And before then, I, there were no apps. So I had to learn all that shit. And right. then all my friends were getting married. And then they were all having babies. And I had to go to seven weddings in one year. I spent so much money, so right. much time. And it does a number on your cycle, like your psych. Psyche. psyche. Yeah, your psyche. Um, it really fucked with me, even though I felt confident in who I was and where I was in life and I was happy. It's still like society tells you you're supposed to do shit a certain way. Of course. Of course. It's like a comparison shopping. You know what I mean? You yeah. can't help it because everyone around you is doing it. And and the the great thing is that you bring up um, that you had to figure out were like gender reveal parties, which are, you know, somewhat new in our world. And they're so ridiculous. What the fuck? Everyone just wants to go viral. That's my thing. I think they just want to have these parties so that Ellen picks it up and they become right? famous. I just don't I mean, get it. And also, who cares what gender? Little teeny tiny private parts. I don't care. I mean, the, uh, the occasional <laughs> ones where the husband is like, disappointed or uh, yes child. all right i'm there those, for that i'm there for that I'm, I'm there for those but the ones on like you know my family and friends my personal facebook page where i have to see theirs i'm like please it's just one you, more thing it's fucking annoying are we allowed they, to curse we're allowed to curse yes right? okay. yes yes and they know the fucking gender like they know ahead of time they're yeah. just doing the, you know it's yeah don't fake bullshit also that kid um, might come out and change their mind man so, <laughs> you know, don't set them up for failure so early. Totally. You're right. And then uh, another t- discovering that your boyfriend likes boys, which h- cracks me up because that was pretty much everyone I dated in L.A. <laughs> you didn't warn me. I should have known. Oh, I mean, what happened with you? Uh, so I was having a very public relationship with another YouTuber Uh, And this went on for four years. And you know about public relationships. I wish I had known. Um, It was great. And people really loved us together. And then we had to figure out how we were going to separate because we uh, decided we weren't good together, which then later led to him realizing he has interest in boys as well. So we faked our relationship for the last year because we weren't really ready to go public. And that shit really fucked with me. That was a difficult year of my life. It had to be. Yeah, it was bonkers. And then here's this. He decided to make a video after all that and gave me two hours notice that he was going to make the video Ah! out, out, out himself and out our relationship. And I got wasted that day. I bet. Yeah. At least it was longer. I had 30 seconds. Um, but there was 30 no, seconds? I, I had 30 seconds oh, shit. from a tweet. It wasn't necessarily an, an an outing like yours, but still a breakup, you know? Oh, man. I mean, are you still friends with him, by the way? Yes, and he wrote the forward to the book. So it all, oh. like, it all worked out perfect, and he's engaged this wonderful man, and, like, everything worked the way it was supposed to, but it was dramatic, to say the least. 
You know, and when I dated some guys in L.A. who I thought were, like, in love with my pussy, um, (laughs) I'd get clues when they'd be like, you know, that guy's my type. And I'm like, what? I'm like, I want a guy that just loves my pussy. Like, can you just love it? And more and more guys are, like, fluid. I'm not holding that against them. Yeah. But for my own personal taste, I want someone that loves my Loves. Do you know what my therapist said? (laughs) She was like, does he get a boner every time you, like, walk around the house naked? And I was like, the light bulb went on. I was like, oh, no. Oh, no, he doesn't. Wow. He doesn't love my pussy. (laughs) Damn. (laughs) That is so funny. I mean, were there other signs? Did you ever look back in hindsight and go like, oh, like, what didn't I do? Did you try to, like, blame yourself? Of course. I mean, there were all the signs, and I just shoved them away, as we are so good at doing. Um, But I did have a moment of, like, am I not sexy? Like, it is hard not to turn internally and be like, what's wrong with me? Like, am I doing this wrong? But no. A hundred percent, because that's what our egos do. You know what I mean? It's so much easier to blame ourselves. What is the most important lesson you'd say you've learned in your mid-30s? I think it's that you're allowed to do your life your way, and you don't have to do it like society or like you think you're supposed to do it. You don't have to check all those boxes that everyone else on your Facebook feed has checked. You're doing it the way you're doing it, and that's like more than enough. It's perfect. That's so true. And not just like for society, but also in relationships, because I think it took me until my mid 30s to go, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm making sure you're happy. I'm not even making sure I'm happy. I'm not even acting myself. That's right. Because I'm trying to make sure you're happy. And I think in your that mid 30s, you're like, no, my life is about me and what makes me happy. Not to be the selfish and the ignorant way, but in the taking care of yourself. Way. Absolutely. I think you have to be selfish and self care and do all those things. And that then only benefits your relationship and the person that you're meant to be with down the line. A hundred percent. I mean, there is a lot of stuff that you kind of online shopping away your anxiety. Don't do it, which is so funny. Um, But also do it. It's so fun. It's I I just I love online shopping. Come on. I do, too. I'm addicted to it. It's where you like to go. I'm also addicted to returning everything. Me too. Oh my god! I I have I I like get so much joy out of returning. Me you get too. that email that's like your refund is here. Oh, <laughs> it's so good. It's so. And then good. do you do you also do the thing where which I'm glad websites do this now online sites, but they they leave stuff in your cart. They sure do. And then the next day, if I wake up and I'm still thinking about it, then I know I should buy it. But yeah. I'll have to leave it in my cart overnight. But sometimes like Nordstroms will send you an email being like. Your stuff's still in the car. I know. And you're like, oh, I know. <laughs> they taunt you. They, they taunt you with a, there's one left. Oh, that gets me. That gets me every time. I get nervous. I start <laughs> sweating. Like, get on there fast. <laughs> what are some other advice? Let me plug the book again. 30 Life Crisis, Navigating My 30s, One Drunk Baby Shower at a Time. What are some other things in the book that you kind of help women Oh, well, bring your own booze to all these events because sometimes they don't have them, and that's not good. No. That's not good. It's not good. Uh, But keep your friends close. I I really value female friendship, and I think it's distracting. The older you get, you think it's scary because your friend group gets smaller, but that's okay. In high school, it was all about, like, getting a big friend group, but now it's, like, really harvest those good friendships. Those will take you a long way. It's so true, because then when you get in your 40s, you're like, okay, this is my circle, and I'm so happy. It's the but best. It's, it's the best, but that is also funny if like you move into a new town or do you have a different job. There's one, you're like, do I let this friend in my circle? Like, You make them work extra hard in order to bring them in. At least I do. I don't know about that you. That sounds like a great reality TV show. <laughs> Get in her friend circle. <laughs> Will you make it in yes. my friend circle? I think people would not. I think they'd be more scared to be in my friend circle. <laughs> I think they would be scared of my friends. Um, you did talk about you that you were diagnosed with OCD in your 30s. Yeah. Yes. And, and social anxiety. And so for the people that go, we all have OCD or we all have social anxiety. 
but you were diagnosed with it. What is the difference between that and people who claim they everybody has it? Well, I think everyone likes to say social anxiety as an excuse to like not go to a party, which like <laughs> take that excuse. Fair enough. Um, but mine, mine manifests physically. Even if I can like self talk, like I'll go to a mall or or an airport, and things will start to like kind of swirl, and it's like an actual physical uh, reaction. reaction. I, I don't. It's so like deep rooted. And I don't really, I mean, I'm working out in therapy, like where that comes from. But um, yeah, I have these fears, like fear of passing out in public. Never passed out before ever in my life. But it's <laughs> deep rooted and I just, I, I can't, it just manifests in my body. That's another good thing in your 30s is that's when you kind of go into therapy and do some oh real God. work. Therapy is, yes, because in my 20s, I would like go to therapy, but I never really did the work. I just went to say that I totally. went. It's hard. It's hard work. It's hard to open it up is. about yourself and really look at the stuff that you've been shoving under the rug. A hundred percent. I talk about it all the time. And listeners are like, yeah, we get it. Go back to your childhood to heal your core issue or trauma. <laughs> but it's true because then otherwise it you bring it into your 40s, your 50s, and you don't want to be that person. <laughs> Do you also bring it into, I'm curious, a, like um, parenting? A hundred percent. Things that you didn't even realize were? Yeah. I think most anyone that would, any therapist would tell you a hundred percent if you have some major core trauma or any core trauma, um, those experiences are going to come out either exactly the same or sideways or um, manifest in anxiety um, that's why I'm a huge believer in going back and doing the work on you because the peace then you can have as you get older is just so much better. Yeah. Otherwise I'd be that drunk lady with a paper bag and a bottle <laughs> in a corner all day long. I feel like sometimes I'm that lady, but like, you know, that's okay. Once in a while. I save those. I save those for special. My binge drinking are for special occasions. Special occasions. <laughs> are you with anyone now? Are you dating? I am. So I wrote this book and I was single and then I met somebody and it happened so organically and literally every cliche, like when I wasn't like looking for it looking of course and he read the book and he still loves me so that's cool and <laughs> yeah and we're just doing it our own way we're just going at our own pace and you know trying to just go with the flow I get that that's what Donnie and I did we just try to stay present and just not try to create stories because that's what gets you in trouble yeah what in the book 30 life crisis did he read that he went Tell me more about this. He didn't want it. He was like, don't tell me any more about this. I overshare <laughs> so much, like so many dating stories. And, you know, that's a huge tell part. It was it. a huge part of my life. And he was like, well, I'm going to write you a book of all the stories that I have with all the beautiful women I've ever dated. Oh, my God. Always adds beautiful in there, uh, which is hilarious. But he's got a great sense of humor. And I think he's just proud of me. And he's glad of this chapter of my life is over. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it's like I didn't realize it, too, because I've written books about every relationship. And Donnie, when I started dating him, he was like, hey, uh, I, I was kind of scared in the beginning that I was just going to be another chapter. He still might be. No. <laughs> <laughs> just dangle like, that over his head. <laughs> That's fucked up. I'm like, you're the, my happily ever after book, Donnie. Aww. You're the happily ever after. Um, so on your YouTube channel, you host the Not So Sober Bachelor Recap. Will you be bringing it back this fall? I got to say, we did that, but it was exhausting. Those shows are so long. And they seem to right. get long. They're like five hours at this point. And like, so we'd be like through the episode and I like couldn't even stay awake. I don't know. Do you yeah, watch? Well, this is the thing, Lisa. I'm so glad because we do recaps. And of course, I've got Kay Casey that calls in and does them for us. And um, we, of course, make fun of the clips and yada, yada. But when I join in, I'm like, the big question here is, am I just getting older or are these shows getting dumber or are these shows getting redundant? Like there's a shift that's happened. It's so weird that you say that. I totally agree. I think it's so much more toxic now. I don't know if people are angrier just in the world right now or if social media has like amped up everything but I totally agree they jump in so hard and so fast now right. that it's just like kind of nasty and not the fun nasty it's not and K Casey actually made a good point which was um they're all, all want to be Instagram stars yes like, that's their you know, career we, path which is bonkers but 
good for them? I don't know. I, I guess, but I, I mean, I guess if you really want that, Bachelor is a great way to go, but it's not giving us that same TV, I think, that we originally fell in love with. Yeah, it's not as pure. It's, yeah, they're all there for the poop tea sponsorship. <laughs> Are you um, planning on having kids someday? I don't know yet. I go back and forth. Should I? What do you think? I tell people no. Um, but really? I don't be Wait, uh-huh. I love that. Keep going. Let me hear this. <laughs> That's amazing. You never I mean, hear that. I appreciate that. I, when you have children, it is the most wonderful thing in the world. But I'm telling people that don't have children, like, if you find the love of your life and you're okay, adopt some dogs and go live out your life as becoming like spiritual love balls of light because there's so much stress yeah and kids are born and and i don't know they're just different they're much much more difficult and this time of the in the world is difficult too i mean how do you navigate with social media i would again so there's like a, it's like a toxic soup, but I don't mean to tear down people that they're going to have. To, by all means, if you want them, have them. But if you're going to ask me the question, like I tell my sister, I'm like, uh, 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 or tell my sister, I'm like, uh, uh, uh. That's don't fascinating. Do it. I appreciate that. We need more of that. Yeah. Also, yeah, the world's so populated. It's like, do we really need more? <laughs> <laughs> and then watch. You're going to call next month. We'll call me and going. Guess what? Guess who's pregnant? Oops. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully not. Um, so weddings that, that it's, I obviously am not putting any pressure on you to answer this question if you're going to get married or not, but, um, is it okay to have big weddings in your late thirties, forties, or you should you keep it more intimate? I mean, do you get ridiculous as you get older wanting those big weddings or not? I sort of feel like that, but also I'm trying not to judge people. And if like, that's really what you want to do, then go for it. It just seems a little silly to me. Like I'd be fine not having one, but my boyfriend wants the party. No, like I I think maybe I'd like to be married, uh, but I don't need the whole thing. You don't need the whole thing. I made fun of people who were older um, and got and had the big, you know, Cinderella white dress. And um, then I met Donnie and married him. And I found myself in a big fucking Cinderella white. I did it. I was like, did you love it, though? I loved it. And I'm like, I don't care if I look like a fucking housewife of Chicago. And <laughs> you know, that's not a series yet, but I'm sure it will be. But I didn't care. It was like, again, in your 40s, you start to not give a fuck what people say. Well, that's great. Then just do it the way you want to do it. I think just exactly. like cut out all the traditions and do it the way that you want to do it. Let me plug your book again. 30 Life Crisis, Navigating My 30s, One Drunk Baby Shower at a Time. You've done so many weddings are there some where you've seen trends where you're like, oh, God, like the rainbow colored bridesmaids dresses, one of each color and blah, blah, blah. any of that you're like, you know what, people, you got to stop this. I think everyone just now is trying to be like the anti that. So everyone's trying to be like quirky with like a taco truck and, the, <laughs> you know, like the the cupcakes. And it's just like then then everyone does it and then it's not so unique anymore. But no. Yeah. But the dresses, God. I've I've been a bridesmaid a few too many times and they're always awful. There's no way around it there really isn't and you're it, it really i feel bad of how much you guys have to pay for your dresses what to did be you make wedding. yours wear um uh, it's really inexpensive because i bought them for oh, them. that's nice <laughs> yeah <laughs> otherwise <laughs> that's awesome they were pretty but i went to a place that was like you know a, a giant warehouse that there was like 7,000 of the same dresses though so I got it for like 150 bucks each but some of these but what is the usual price that a bridesmaid today has to spend I don't know I feel like I all my friends got them from J crew so it was like 250 bucks or something for a you know a taffeta dress that I'll never wear again. I sold one once and I got re- I was really happy about that. That's so funny. Yeah. Cuz where the hell are you going to wear it again? You're never. They're always like, "Oh, and you can wear this again." That's that's the pitch of the bride always. Like, "I just wanted to get you this one cuz you'll wear it again." It's like, "No, I'm not going to wear this again." Right? And then you don't need 7 or 10 bridesmaids. I or the 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 maid of honor who gets stuck with having to pay for everything. Oh, that was me always. Really? Yeah, and my friends were all bridezillas. I love them all, but all bridezillas. Were you the one with the most money? Probably. Is that why yeah. I was? Was that? Yes. that? <laughs> That's why. Oh my god! Is that why I'm the godmother too? I have like five yes. godchildren. God damn totally. it! God. That's another book. I'm telling you. Yeah. Sadly, I didn't even my- connect that. 
You are an awesome person, so I'll give you that. So I would want you to as my maid of honor. But there is, you know, a connection to she can fucking pay for this shit. And uh, guess what? My goddaughter, godson's going to get a birthday present, a Christmas present every year. Yeah, that's that's true. Damn. And then if you don't wind up having children, you're going to wind up being grateful that you're a godfather. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I, I like having that as sort of like a backup plan. I got that backup plan. What does your family think about where you are and what you're doing with your life? I'm not sure they like fully understand what's happening, but I know that they're very, very, very proud. You know, like I try to explain it. And then it's always like, well, when is it going to be on TV? That's always like the follow up oh, question. Right. <laughs> it's like, right. I, well, it, it, you can put it on your TV. Um, but yeah, no, I, I do think that they're very proud of me. Do they, is there ever anything where they call me like, Lisa, why are you telling that story? That's my mom. That's my imitation of my own mother. She sounds but, lovely. <laughs> she's so sweet. She's Mother Teresa. Oh. I'm telling way too many sex stories. But does, do they ever get like embarrassed of your TMI? I think this book might have pushed my father over the edge um, in terms of that. But we don't talk about it. Um, I, they just sort of, sort of skim over that. My mom loves it, though. My mom wants all of it. My grandma, too. Do you have great like um, sex moment stories in this book? Oh, yeah. And the forward Shane wrote is um, the author of this book took my virginity because I took his virginity. That's um, amazing. Yeah. So there's like way too many details. But what is the there one, one you can tease us with so people definitely go get this book about a great sex story that's embarrassing, um, awful, because I've shared all of mine. My listeners like, we've heard that one already. <laughs> well, this one's like kind of what happened afterwards. So oh I went God. on a first date and brought him home because I'm a classy lady. And we got to business and then he left. And the next morning I woke up and I couldn't find my high heels. Like, And I was in my house. <laughs> this motherfucker stole my shoes. No. And I'm not sure why. I have two theories. One, he either has like a wall of conquests with heels, which oh. I kind of like that. It's a little Dexter-ish. That's kind of, that's kind of sexy in a weird way, but the, yeah. the fetish would be your next thing, right? Well, or he needed a pair of heels to like strut his stuff <laughs> down in West Hollywood, <laughs> which would be like, you know, on, tr on oh. brand for me. So those were my two theories about it. But I've had a lot of bad dates that kind of end in similar odd ways. Oh. Right, me too. I've been ditched in people in their apartment. What? After, yes, it's just terrible. They'd say, you want a cheeseburger? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and then they never come back. <laughs> no. What did you do? How long were you there for? I would wait like hours. I'm like, how far is McDonald's? And I look out the window and the golden arches are across the street with the stop lights it, off. Stop it. <laughs> so I have to walk home in my fucking jean skirt and it. 80s <laughs> oh my god that's fabulous but they Terrible, all but make you who you are right like i mean they make you humble that's yeah. for sure um but dating like you said when i was i got divorced when i was 33 so i had to get back in the dating game and figuring out text messaging and that whole world of how to how long do you wait until you text someone back and um do you seem too needy if you answer right away i mean you had to figure all that shit out too, right? Yeah, but now, then I got to a point where I was like, oh, fuck it. If I want to text them, I'm going to text them. And if that like turns them off, then like definitely not my person. I think that's a good thing about being in your 30s. You're a lot more like we were talking about confident in yourself and you just don't care. And so right. I think it ultimately made dating a little bit easier because it wasn't about them. It was about me now. Good, good, good. Yeah. And then what about sex? Did you, um, how did you approach that on your dates? The thing is, your body in the 30s is different than your body in the 20s. Right. So I had a little bit of a hard time, like, being comfortable in myself and feeling sexy again. Um, but I, I got that. over that, I guess. And I know. I'm like, C-section scar. I'm like, here I come, dating world. <laughs> yeah. And then you realize, just grow pubes over it and fine. <laughs> <laughs> and guys love that. And also men just, like, love body. Like... I don't know. I think we worry way too much about. Of course we do. Every little detail doesn't help. Instagram doesn't fucking help. It with their doesn't. Air brushing. And everyone does it. I don't. I'm not 
savvy enough to do it. So I just, I'm not either. I'm not either. The best I can do is I'll throw a f- the Instagram one filter on it. Same. I feel good That's about it. that. That second That's filter. Yeah. All I got. That's, That's all, all I got. got. And sometimes I don't even do that. I'm like, fuck it. This is me. Love it or leave it. Yeah. Lisa Schwartz. I'm so happy for you. I'm proud of you doing Thank what you, you love and you're doing it great. 30 life crisis is the name of book. Navigating my thirties. One drunk baby shower at a time. The book is available right now. Come back anytime. You were delighted to talk to you. Oh, you too. Thank you for having me. Honored. Jenny McCarthy Show. Oh!